losing all of your health and having to replay the whole level from the beginning isn't fun. So let's make a checkpoint system. You simply touch a checkpoint to activate it and when you do lose all of your health, the level restarts from the last checkpoint. For this, I'll create a new project using the Windy Woods template. If you already have a project to work with, I would still recommend doing this in Windy Woods first so you can get a good understanding of how it works before you add it to your own project. You also need some assets for this tutorial, so go ahead and download them from the link in the description. Then in Game Maker, go under Tools, click on Import Local Package, and then select the asset package that you just downloaded. You will see this, where you just need to click on Add All and then Import. From this asset package, you will get a sprite called SPR underscore Checkpoint, which is under Sprites, Environment, and Interactive. If you open it up, you'll see there are two frames, one that is displayed when the checkpoint is inactive and the other that is displayed when the checkpoint is active. And because this isn't an animation, we have set the FPS up here to zero. Create a new object and name this obj underscore checkpoint. Assign the new SPR checkpoint sprite to it. Now open the RM level 1 room, which is the first level of this project. Select the instances layer and drag some checkpoint instances into the room. I'll also add some enemies around these checkpoints so I can easily test losing and respawning. Now when the player touches a checkpoint, we want that checkpoint to activate and to save the player's information. So inside the new obj checkpoint object, add a collision event which will check for a collision with obj player. Now if you're using gml visual, look to this side and if you're using gml code, then look here. First of all, we are going to use an if condition to check if the image index of the checkpoint is equal to 1. That means that the instance is on the second frame, which is the activated checkpoint. And if the checkpoint is already activated, then we don't want anything to happen. So in that case, we simply exit the event, so the rest of the event doesn't run. Now if the checkpoint is not activated, its image index will be 0 by default, and the rest of the event will continue to run. So after the if block, we'll set the image index variable to 1, so the checkpoint displays its second frame and is activated. In the game, you can now touch a checkpoint and activate it. Now let's make the checkpoint save the player's information when it's activated. In the same event, let's open an INI file and that file will be called checkpoint.ini. These files are simply used to save information to the device. If this file doesn't exist already, it will be created automatically. Now let's write a number to the INI file. This will be saved under the section player. This particular value will be called x and the value that will be saved will be the x of the other instance. In this event, the checkpoint is colliding with the player, so the player is the other instance. So by saying other.x, we are saving the x position of the player. Then similarly, we are saving the player's y position, then its hp and finally the coins. After saving all of these values, we are closing the INI file. This data will now be saved whenever the player touches a checkpoint. If you have more variables that you want to save, then you can add them here. Now we need to load this data back whenever the player is defeated and the level starts again. Open the obj player object and here add a new event, which will be room start under other. This event runs when the room or the level begins. So if the checkpoint file exists when the level begins, we'll restore all the information saved in that file. In this event, we'll use this condition to check if the checkpoint.ini file exists. If it does, we'll open it. We'll then read a number value from the ini file. This will be from the player section and will be called x. We are simply using the same names for the section and the key that we used when we saved this information. 
that value will be loaded into the x variable of the player. If the value doesn't exist in the file, then the same x value of the player will be loaded as a default. Then similarly, we are loading the y, hp and coins values and applying them to the correct variables. Finally, we are closing the ini file. If there are more variables that you saved, you can load them here. Our checkpoints should be working now, so let's run the game. I'll activate this checkpoint and then lose all my health. When I respawn, you can see that I'm placed at the checkpoint that I activated last. You can now go ahead and place as many checkpoints in your level as you want, but there is one more thing we need to handle before this system is finished. The checkpoint file that we save is only relevant within a level. If the level is finished or if the player quits the game, then that file should be deleted. Otherwise, if it wasn't deleted, you'd run into different kinds of bugs. So we want that file to be deleted when the player quits the level, when the game ends and when the game starts. Open the obj persistent manager object. In this template, this object is marked as persistent and it's created in the first room. So it exists all the time throughout the whole game, which is why this object is perfect to capture events like game end and game start. Add the game end event to this, which is found under other. This event runs when the game is closed. Now in this event, we'll check if the checkpoint.ini file exists. And if it does, we'll delete it. Now we want the same to happen when the game starts. So I'll right click on this event, click on duplicate event, and then duplicate it as the game start event. Now that that's handled, let's open obj game manager, which is placed in every in-game level. We want this object to delete the checkpoint file when the level ends and the player is alive. That can happen if you successfully finish a level or exit through the pause menu. If the player was defeated, then the checkpoint file shouldn't be deleted because then you'd need it to restore the player's properties according to the data in that file. So let's open the room end event and scroll to the bottom. Here, let's check if the obj player defeated instance does not exist in the room. That particular instance would only exist if the player was defeated and if it doesn't exist, it means the player is alive. Of course, if you're using your own projects, that might have a different mechanism to check if your player is alive or not. That may be a simple variable in the player object or some other object that you create when your player instance is defeated. So if the player is alive, then we check if the checkpoint file exists and if it does, we delete it. So this should complete our checkpoint system. You can now go ahead and place other checkpoints in your level and it should all work perfectly. Watch this tutorial next to improve your game further and I will see you in the next video.